a massive gorgeous spike on my harlequin haven't seen that one for over a year if you are new here thank you thank you very much i hope you stay and if you already know about this phalaenopsis saga of mine here on my channel thank you very much for clicking on yet another video to see how we are progressing harlequin is a go with a gorgeous new spike and that would be yeah after a year of not seeing this one bloom very nice next up this is the bubblicious one that we repotted where i always say i feel like a beginner when it comes to complex files and we do have some activity down here somewhere i saw it there you go there's a beautiful spike coming so I'm going to let Bubblicious bloom, despite the fact that it's only been in this setup for, well, since July of this year, 2020. But it is completely established in its pot. It is pot bound. It's a go. We're going to get blooms from Bubblicious. Here's Walter Sr. with a spike. Now, Walter Sr., in my opinion, just took to semi-hydro, no issues. So I'm super happy that it's, he's doing the same thing all over again spike is going on there and trigger warning i've got spider web in my phalaenopsis sweetheart and my little spider is there to help me out but we need to address some issues we'll get to that and with all this webbing i cannot know at this point whether i have a spike or not if not that's fine as well i have to address something there and i'll show you what that is we'll move on to the next table Phalaenopsis Bubba, by the way, all of these are no IDs. I name them based on my daughter and how I call her at certain times. So you'll see a lot of Bubba's, Bubblicious, Sweetheart, you know, things like that. Bubba is going to be in bloom again. Also a fowl that I haven't seen for over a year. Now established in semi-hydro, beautiful leaves. And I'm so happy to see those bloom soon. Phalaenopsis Hot Kiss is right here. And I only today just saw a spike coming out right down there. So that's a good thing. I was thinking it's a bit late for a spike on this one, but okay, better late than never. Here is Lemon Meringue, another one that my daughter got me. We have a root and a spike coming out at the same time. So that is fantastic. I haven't seen this one in over a year. Here is Alexandra. Also has a spike coming finally after not seeing this one for over a year. And then here is Ninja Yellow trying to bloom again. And I say trying because once this spike has size, has shown some buds and something more substantial, I will be cutting this spike because this orchid is not established in the pot and I don't want to risk its health and possibly losing it by it exerting the energy. And I've seen the blooms and it's just going to give it a rest for this blooming cycle. Nice little root coming out there and that is more important at this point in time than the spike. Only once it's going to start to show buds. And then I have my fowl, big beautiful fowl white Maximilian here and it has a spike as well and we have not seen these blooms for over a year either but now it is fully pot bound and established in the self-watering with Lekka. Gorgeous two new leaves this season. I'm okay with it blooming from here on in but there's some things I wanted to just point out and work with you and show you what I do especially this time of year and especially seeing as things are going to get a little bit cooler, I'm taking advantage of a very, very warm day. And I have them outside, possibly for the last time, but it is easier for me to deal with them outside. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm back here with my Phalaenopsis sweetheart. And you see these shiny things here, sticky points. That is possibly happy sap possibly the start of scale, whatever it is, it's not staying on that leaf because it will attract a bug, a pest of some sort 
if it stays. And I can tell you, yes, I have my spider, but maybe he won't be able to keep up. So we're going to address this, especially the happy sap that is here around the underside of the leaf. During the daytime, I have no problems wiping the orchid because the stomata isn't open, but excess happy sap has to go because the next step is something is going to manifest itself and I'm not having it. So what I do is take a rag, it is clean and it has insecticidal soap on it. And I go around with the insecticidal soap and clean off that sticky stuff, whether it's happy sap or something that is starting to manifest itself, I do not care. It's coming off with insecticidal soap. That includes the edges and the underside of the leaves because usually happy sap actually develops on the underside. It can attract, the next step can be mealybugs or in my case, my orchids this year that have failed and were taken down and are no more came because of scale. You can see the underside of the leaf, how spotted it is. That is all happy sap and that's coming off. It's a magnet for pests. We have had such a mild winter so far. Normally these pests would be dying off because of the cold temperatures. With these mild temperatures, they won't die off. They will actually culminate into a real major pest problem further down the line. So you can see all those spots there. They are not damaged. It's just where the happy sap oozes out and leaves sort of a wet spot where anything insect-wise can just wander in and start destroying the tissue. And that is one of the things I'm doing right now. As an example, I won't show you all the cases, but again, if you see, if you see something like this, the sticky, I don't know if it's clearly visible, but there's a sticky little speckle here. There is no happy sap on the underside. So what I have to do in this case is check where the orchid is living and look at what's above it if there is happy sap on the top of it, over it. Where this one's living, I don't think there is anything above it. So if this is happening, then something is manifesting itself somewhere and it's just a question of wiping it off. But I will double check where it lives because if you see something on the top, something is dripping up from above it. And that needs to be taken care of and addressed. And another thing I'm doing is checking all the reservoirs. And I'll show you one example of what I do this time of year with my fowls. Even though they're in growth stage, if they're also spiking, I still fertilize them. But what about the reservoir and what goes on there? What am I looking out for? Let me show you now. Pretty palm trees, huh? <laughs> Not part of the point here, but these seeded themselves at the beginning of the year. And look at them now. I didn't put them there. My Gara is in here, but I guess palm trees want to be in here. So yeah, they're huge. I love it. Didn't do anything. It just happened. Right, back to the Phalaenopsis. So here is lemon meringue. And I want to show you the deposit. Pardon the blackening, that's just old seaweed. I will wash that out. But the point is, the deposit is completely, completely empty. But the microfiber is not. I don't know if you can see the water developing there. I never let the microfiber ever go dry. That is my plan anyway. Sometimes I miss the mark. But the intention is never let the fiber go dry. The deposit, yes. Especially in winter, I let the deposit completely deplete itself before actually then refilling the pot. I'll be right back. I'm going to clean my pot. All clean. Right, so this little palm tree pot is going to serve me two purposes because, let's see how I can do this without messing things up because I take the mask and before filling the reservoir I flush it 
I flush the pot through with plain RO water. One and a half masks of that, and that's why I have it over the palm trees, <laughs> so that they can get whatever is coming out of the bottom. Let's not waste good water. And then I fill up the reservoir, not full, so it's about half full. In summer, I would fill this up completely. Put my pot back in. Oh, it's all a bit awkward, but okay. There, put my pot back in and the orchid is good to go. It's been flushed through and it has new fertilizer in a clean pot. So on a beautiful calm day as it is today, I don't have to worry about things getting blown away. Things could still dry out. I am going to continue to assess and check the two points that I just picked up, like happy sap that needs to come off and doing that with insecticidal soap and lifting my pots to see if they're still full or as in the case with the lemon meringue, do they need a top up? So if you have any questions regarding what I'm doing, please ask away in the comments below. And again, I appreciate it if it's your first time here just as much as I appreciate everybody that shows up and watches my videos from Jump Street and knows the history and the struggles of my journey with complex phalaenopsis. And you can see, we are getting there. We are getting there. We're gonna get some serious nice blooms. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.